everyone. Welcome to the Image and Wire show. My name is Jake Fish and I'm the host of the show and also the editor of the Image and Wire newsletter. And we have a great episode for all of you today. We have um, a couple of AI superstars with us. We have uh, uh, Elad Wallach from ADOC and Dr. Nina Kotler from Radiology Partners. Um, <laughs> for, uh, for those of you who are in the AI space, uh, you know, they might not need much of introduction, but uh, for everybody else and in, in for you know, the rest of the industry, uh, Dr. Collar and Ayad, first of all, welcome, and then maybe just quickly introduce what you do and, and who you are. Thanks for having us. I can get us started in a lot. I'll pass to you after. So hi, everyone. My name's Nina, and I'm very casual. I go by Nina, so please feel free to call me Nina. Uh, I have um, been a radiologist for, gosh, over 16 years now, which is kind of frightening to say. Uh, but I didn't start my career in radiology. I actually started my career in applied mathematics, uh, specializing in optimization theory. So um, uh, then I ended up going into radiology. And with that, I've, um, I've had the opportunity to play a lot of different roles. I joined the current practice that I'm in, Radiology Partners, about almost nine years ago. And, um, and I'm currently the Associate Chief Medical Officer for, for Clinical Artificial Intelligence, which I think really brings together my passion for radiology and the clinical component along with my background in applied mathematics. A lot. I'll pass to you. You know, I love it that it doesn't matter how much we speak. I, I keep learning new stuff uh, <laughs> about your background. Um, so my name is Alad. Uh, I've not coming from the clinical space, uh, originally coming from the AI space. I've headed AI for the Israeli Air Force um, in this special program in the Ministry of Defense. Uh, there I met my two co-founders, Michael and Guy. Um, you know, finishing the service, we we founded ADOC. Two senators on the service. I've I've had the fortune to work with Academy on like cutting edge research and then trying to operationalize that. And I think that's where I learned and found my personal passion. It's not about using the most amazing algorithms in the world. Obviously that's fun, but uh, for me, the biggest thing is, is seeing impact and operationalizing it. And I was astounded to see that, you know, 80% of the work is, is not in building the algorithm at all. 80% is making it work. It's the, it, it, there's, you know, thousands of little details into making AI useful. And I think that's what, you know, that's what I'm uh, very much passionate about. Um, about ADOC, just two sentences, we've started a company about uh, almost five years ago. Um, since then, we grew quite a lot. I would say we're now considered uh, one uh, one of the leaders in the space. Uh, we've raised the most money uh, in the AI space, 130 million uh, Series E company, about 250 to 300 employees, um, serving you know hundreds of medical centers with AI solutions. Um, and essentially, we are, I would say, very focused on being the you know, radiology AI company, focusing on the radiologists, making their life better you know, faster, better, higher quality, uh, because we believe that uh, radiology has a massive impact downstream and a small, every small increment in terms of how radiology uh, deliver care will have massive downstream implications on length of stay, on ED throughput, on revenue generation. Uh, so uh, we, you know, I would say we uh, partner with radiologists to make sure that the health systems get the benefit of the, uh, of uh, re AI augmented radiology. And that's exactly one of the reasons why we partnered is all those things that you said, like, I, I don't know if anyone noticed, but he, he, Allah is not talking about that this algorithm was created and has this specific accuracy. It's about all the stuff that you do around that. And what motivates you, I mean, what motivates a lot is what motivates me as a radiologist, and that's to drive clinical care. And that's at the heart uh, of artificial intelligence. And if you come at it from that perspective, you're going to produce a much better quality product than if you come at it from the perspective of, oh, I just want to create a, a product that does X, Y, or Z. That's really interesting. I'm glad you said that. So uh, about your partnership, maybe you could share a little bit about how it got its start and what it's intended to achieve. I, maybe I'll start with um, a little bit because I, I didn't 
I don't know how many people know. I mean, maybe a lot of people know about Radiology Partners. Gosh, when I first started, no one knew who we were. It's a little surprising to me now that, that so many people do. But, uh, but I began at Radiology Partners back in 2013 at the time where it was just Rich and Anthony. And it was uh, a similar mission, but, but a very different place back then because we didn't have any radiology. Uh, so I was called Rad One as the first person to join. But Radiology Partners is uh, a very large uh, hospital-based practice. It's the largest radiology practice in the U.S. We have about 3,000 radiologists. We do about 10% of the imaging that's done across the nation, and, and we're growing. Um, what's important, I think, about our organization and what's different it, is that Yes, we are consolidating practices because we believe scale is important and scale is needed in order to invest and invest at significant amount of dollars in order to, to really drive transformation. But at the basis of who we are is we're a mission-driven organization and our mission is to transform radiology. And I, I mention all of that because I think that that our partnership with, with ADOC is because we are very mission aligned. I mean, what is it that we need to do in healthcare? There's a huge call to action in healthcare. We can't afford to do what we're doing now and just continue that and do more of it. We need to have a disruption. We need to do, we need to improve quality, uh, drive better outcomes. We need to improve the patient experience, the physician experience, the hospital experience, and we need to do that at a, a decreased cost. And so in order to, in order to sort of manage that, that very lofty mission, you need people that are aligned. And so our partnership began there. It didn't begin with, hey, what algorithms do you have? And oh, those are really cool and let's partner because of that. It began because of who are you as a group? Um, what is your mission? What are your values? What are your beliefs? And how are you trying to get there? And, and that alignment, gosh, that started back when when we very first met, which was years ago a lot. I think we met um, through someone and, and finally met in person at RSNA, like maybe in 2016. It, it was many years ago. And we ended up running a pilot together where we trialed some of the algorithms. And yeah, the goal is to see how the algorithms do, but the, the ultimate goal in my mind, especially because now AI is so early in its maturity is, I want to find a partner that can work with me. And so I'm looking for what is that group doing and um, and how do they tackle problems? And are they helping me solve things that I run into and working together with, with me as a partner? And we found that from the very beginning when we first started our pilot with them. And uh, that was 2019, 2020. And then we we decided, hey, we, we should partner together because we are so aligned and we can certainly be better together than either one alone. Just like an AI alone is not a solo operation. A RAD or any physician doesn't work alone. And if you could bring them together in the right way, you can have just a, a, a exponential improvement in, in what either one can do. And so we started that partnership. I think we announced it in April 2021. Yeah, this year, April of this yeah, year. Crazy. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop talking a lot. I'll let you talk a little bit about the partnership. No, no, I, I absolutely agree. I think that my, so the question is when you're doing like a deep partnership, I think that exactly the alignment and vision is necessary. And I think we, we both, um, as probably a lot of other people feel that care is going to be delivered differently, you know, five years from now, right? So like if we're thinking five years from now, 10 years from now, it, it is going to be completely different. And the question is, how is this transformation going to come, right? So there is one worldview, which is, okay, you're going to have these vendors running around uh, creating disruptive solution, then trying to push them to market. I think that's one way. Or what I believe is this collaborative evolution, which is, okay, we're, we're going to start somewhere. We're going to find use cases where we build a lot of value, but we're going to keep pushing the envelope and keep uh, iterating and transforming and changing over time. And like, it's one plus one plus one, but at some point in time, like you created really transformation of care. Um, and I think that's, that's where we found RP is really amazing partners because, because of the, the mission alignment. So we wanna we wanna start with the right use cases that already deliver value and make a ton of sense for you know radiologists and health systems. But every year we believe it's gonna be completely different. And I think that's what we're excited about is about the evolution and the change and the fact that we're gonna change it together. Because us as, as vendors, I would say we can bring the technology, we understand how that works. Which, you know, we can bring all the infrastructure and all that, but the clinical innovation and how do you do the 
the clinical workflow integration, I think that's where there are a lot of questions, you know, quality assurance. Uh, do you want to route exempt differently? Who's reading what? Uh, do you want to change uh, when patients leaving the facility? Do you want to have AI read it? Like there are a lot of those clinical questions that I think uh, we don't have the answers. I don't think we, we could or should give the answers. I think it's much more in the clinical domain and, and RP is an amazing partner for that. I, I love that term you used, and I'm so going to use it for now on collaborative evolution. That is awesome. It's totally what it is, right? We're so early in AI, there's not defined standards. It's like you're trying to pave a path of innovation that has not been done in our field, not just radiology, but in healthcare overall. So how do you do that? I mean, you can't open a book and follow directions as to what to do. You have to collaborate, and that collaboration is really an evolution. It, it doesn't mean you're, you're going to get it perfect the first time. That would be very simplistic thinking. It's about evolving and iterating on what is working and what doesn't working and doing that as a, a team so that you can get to the best outcome. And that's why I, I love being an early adopter, because you get that opportunity to do it. And, and you get the opportunity also to drive the path toward what it should be, which I think you know, you and I are, are really aligned on that having the radiologist in the center of, of care and having AI help with that. So, so to me, it's just a really exciting partnership and we're just getting started. That's so good. Uh, I don't even know where to start. So we talked about the, uh, <laughs> the, the evolution and um, the iteration. So, and here we are six months into it, which, um, you know, as far as your vision is concerned, is probably very early, but I'm sure it's been a busy six months. Can, can you help us all understand um, kind of what what some of those iterations and integration efforts have been like uh, since April? Sure. So I can start. Um, one of the things that we realized, because we already had a pilot that we had run with, with ADOC. I don't know if people know about that, so let me just describe it quickly. In the beginning of 2020, we ran a pilot for six months where we used three of their AI critical care triage algorithms and tested it with um, our tests because we have a big practice so our tests are at scale. Uh, we had about 100, now it's now 150 RADs that, that are using it. And we ran some outcomes because we wanted to prove uh, not just, hey, are they a great partner, but also is, is there ROI and can we create a business case out of this and do our RADs like using it? And what is it like to actually clinically roll out at scale? It's very different than, than rolling out across a smaller group. And so we did that. And when we ran that pilot, we found a few things. Um, number one, for, for an ROI, we, we found that we were finding more cases, more pathology than we would have otherwise. Uh, so we, you know, we're humans and we know that we miss some things. So with AI, the rat and the AI were, were better together. So we missed um, about it was 2.4% of intracranial hemorrhages were, were picked up together that wouldn't have been otherwise 4.4% of PEs. Uh, we also found that our radiologists were more efficient in their reads, which is kind of a, a thing that you wouldn't think, like a triage algorithm. Why would that make, yeah, it makes you get to the re read faster, but does it make you actually read faster? Um, and not faster because you're working harder, but faster because you're more efficient. And it did. And we can talk about why after. We also found that our RADs really enjoyed using it. So, so this, when we were gonna turn it off, our pilot was six months in 2020, when we were gonna turn it off, the RADs were like, no, no, please, we, we want you to keep it on. So we have been rolling that out and working with ADOC ever since, um, it kind of under a pilot, but just a pilot, this would never go away because we wanted to keep it on. Uh, so, um, so yeah, it didn't just start necessarily in April and that's why I wanted to go back to that a little bit. When, uh, since we have that experience in running the solution for so long with a very large portion of our practice, we realized we got some chance to think about what would it be, what would we need to do in order to roll it out across uh, 3,000 radiologists. 3,000 radiologists that all work a little differently, that have different clinical systems, that have different use cases and needs, right? Radiology is a very hyper-local practicing thing. We, we, we call it a specialty, and it is, right? And it's wonderful. It has a lot of, of overarching um, uh overarching things that we need to do, but but it's also very different from one practice to another. So we had to think about how do you expand from 100, 150 people to 3,000? And this is what we've been working on over the, the last six months. Uh, we realized that you need infrastructure, number one. You need technology that can align all of the disparate technologies out there. 
so that when you do roll it out, um, when you roll it out fully and clinically, that it's seamless. Now, technical rollout is part of it. Uh, the clinical rollout, as Alad mentioned, is, is another thing. And I think that's what people know a lot less about. You know, everyone hears about the technical rollout and, oh, it can be you know, pretty seamless. And Alad, you guys have done it really well. And you could roll it out fairly quickly, probably, to, to any local practice or, or hospital anywhere, because they have a lot of experience doing it. But then there's the whole other side of how, you, how do you clinically roll it out? with um, radiologists who are not used to using a tool that they haven't learned and understood. And so I think there's a huge amount of education that it is imperative and, and almost unethical for us not to do and take the time to educate our radiologists about how do you properly consume artificial intelligence? It's not a new VR system, right? It's not a new PAX upgrade and a new capability on your viewer where maybe you could roll that out and just teach it with some technical people and do some change management. This is a clinical tool. This affects clinical care. And if we are going to roll it out and roll it out in an ethical way, we need to educate our radiologists about how to be proper consumers of it. So what we've been doing in the last a very long winded answer to your question, I apologize, but, but these things are complex. So what we've been doing over the past six months is preparing our infrastructure from a technical standpoint to be able to expand across multiple different entities that are all, you know, have different uh, different mechanisms of interaction and different locations of the data and different clinical application systems doing that. Uh, that infrastructure is really important. And, and then also talking about how are we going to up level and educate our radiologists about something that they, they really don't know that much about yet because it's new and totally different. Great. And Elon, yeah. from a technology perspective, how, how did it work on your side? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I tried to find the right metaphor. I'll, I'll, I'll try one out now. So it's sometimes hard to under, fully understand what is the impact of scaling. Right. So let's, let's say I, I tell you, you know, I try, I'm trying to cook an egg, right? So I'm trying to make an omelet. So if I'm making one, you know, that's fine. But let's say now I need to make 10. Okay. Now I need to start thinking, okay, do I need to prepare in advance the, you know, the, the materials and blah, blah, blah. And what happens now that I'm asking you to make a hundred or a thousand eggs, right? Now you need to have like other people working for you and you need to train them and you need to monitor and you need to have like me measurement of how much salt you put in each omelet and creating a process. It's, it's a whole different ballgame. Like that level of scale, we're talking about 10% of the US market, right? 10% of all hospitals, like that's, that's a lot, right? And to scale to that level, it, it, it's just a whole different infrastructure. And I think what I, I appreciate about what Nina has been leading is being very thoughtful about it. And she's, you know, she mentioned this, but I think those are the key elements. One of it is the, is the technical infrastructure, the, all the data movements and how do you move the scans fast enough also on the infrastructure, all the monitoring and operations, like at that scale, you have to monitor everything. Like you have to know if something went wrong or something went wrong with the analysis, some suddenly you, you, you know, you stop getting scanned, like all of this has to be monitored. So building all of that infrastructure and then also the educational framework and the training framework and how do you get this and how do you educate grads and hospitals and like everybody. So um, I think the focus has been very, very, uh, similar for both of us because we have again the same goal, but a lot of the thinking is, you know, what happens if if we're scaling and we can't communicate even with all of the users directly? It's, it's just a whole different ballgame. I I want to tie pull on your analogy because I think analogies can be really helpful. Um, and that that quote from Kurt Langlotz that everyone uses: AI is not going to replace radiologists, but radiologists who use AI are going to replace those who don't. I think that that's been really useful in the industry for people to understand it a little bit better. And I want to, to add to that because I feel really strongly that the appropriate consumption of artificial intelligence requires education and that we in radiology, and, and, and this is part of why we partner with, with Alad and ADOC is they believe the same, is that we need to be in the forefront of this technology, pushing the education, not only to be early adopters, right? An early adopter could just be absorbing it, but also early experts because this technology is not something, it, it's something that you need to drive from the front seat. So here's my, my analogy and it's a car analogy. So um, I really don't think AI is gonna replace us, um, but it will change our profession and how we practice. 
And, and we need to understand that now and, um, and start investing in how we're going to be the leader of that and rather the consumer. So we could take the front seat, we can take the, the driver's seat and drive that change. We could take the back seat and just say, oh, well, let's see, see what happens. You never know. Once everything becomes however it's going to be, then I'll adopt it. Oh, well, OK, that may not work. Or you could choose to do nothing at all and um, and, and have the car drive over you. And, and I think that would be a complete disservice to our patients, our profession and healthcare overall. So for me, it's not just about being an early adopter. It's using that early adopter time to become an early expert so that we can drive that change together. Absolutely. I think that there are, you know, and there are questions, right? It's not, it's not, uh, there isn't a clear answer yet who's going to be, I would say, the AI specialty. Um, I think radiology is, is best positioned and, I, you know, I would, I think should be that specialty. Um, but I think it's not clear. But I think what position radiologists best for it, I think, is, you know, being very informatic savvy, very innovative, understanding data and, you know, and AI and implications of like data and what does this mean? And I think most importantly, I, healthcare is very siloed, right? So you have like different service lines, you have cardiovascular and neuroscience or whatever, and radiology really centralizes everything. So you can really build processes that are really scalable across the organization. So I think radiology is really well suited to take that position, but, you know, it's not, uh, I would say I would. I, I don't think it's it's for granted, right? I think there is work to do, and I definitely agree with Nina that the way to do it is to develop expertise. So you would be the natural AI specialty, like the natural person to reach out to when you need to implement an AI project. Um, and by the way, when I speak with hospital CEOs and CMOs, when you think about AI generally, clinical AI, I'm not talking about imaging AI necessarily. Th there is no clinical AI, like you're going into a hospital, it's not like there is a lot of AI running in the ICUs or race on HR, like, you know, people give the sepsis example, like that's the one, you know, people all, all, always use. And to be honest, that hasn't been so successful as well, right? There is recent publication showing sepsis kind of uh, failed at many accounts. So imaging AI is the first big, large scale implementation of clinical AI in general. And I think there's a massive opportunity in that, in being that specialty that says, okay, I know how to make clinical AI work. I know what to test, how to measure value, how to monitor, how to train, how to educate, and how to develop clinical operations around that. And I think that's a great position to be in. I like what you say, because I totally agree with you about the centralized part. Radiology is at the fulcrum of healthcare. Bill Brody is on our board of directors, and he's a really amazing innovator in, in um in radiology and in healthcare. And he says, radiologists are kind of like the primary care physicians in the hospital. Like who is directing care as the patient goes from one location to another? It's why, it's absolutely, exactly why I went into radiology. When I was looking at all the different subspecialties or different specialties in medicine, um, I actually started before PACS, so it was a really long time ago, but when I went into the reading room, every single division, every specialty was coming down there. It was like the Starbucks of today, where you start your day. You don't start your day without your Starbucks. Well, you don't start your day without going into radiology, and they would run these rotations, and you'd go through all their patients so that they would have an idea of what was going on. Why? Because the radiologist was seeing the patient all the way through their care, so we would talk with, or they would at the time, talk with the I don't know, OBGYN service and then the surgical service and, and then pediatrics. And I'm like, how did these guys know all of that? I want to be as smart as them. It's why I went into radiology. So I do believe it's a it's perfectly centralized place to be at. And yes, we use technology. We've been using technology for so long. We've been redeveloping ourselves. When MRI first came out, people said, well, you're not going to need radiologists anymore. Like this sounds familiar, right? With AI, <laughs> you're not going to need radiologists anymore. MRI is so obvious. Everyone's going to be able to read it. Well, it didn't come automatically. It's not that it automatically went to radiologists. We had to take the effort to learn about it and become the experts. And when we learned about it and became the experts, people are like, oh yeah, I'm going to go to you to, to answer those questions. And we have to do the same thing in, in AI, but I think we're perfectly positioned to do that. So when we, when we talk again about your uh, partnership in kind of the next six months and 18 months and all these things that you just talked about, about the role of AI, uh, you know, short-term and long-term in, in radiology and in healthcare, what, 
how do those things all come together in terms of your your vision for your partnership and and uh in the execution of it so the the partnership is like i said just getting started we're creating technical uh technological infrastructure that is very state of the art uh, cloud native platform so that we can move data orchestrate it in a smart way add value to it with the knowledge of ai i always say what is ai really good at it's great at adding structure to unstructured data Instead of having a radiologist look at an image, you could have an AI look at an image or read a report and, and extract some structure out of that, add it back to the data, and, and then use that for something. So, um, so all of those are capabilities and then distribute it to the right AI at the right time, get that information back, and then pass it back to the radiologist. We're going to continue that. Right now, we've got 15 million exams that are available to that system. Uh, by the end of the year, we should have around 19 million exams, annual exams. I mean, that's that's more than probably most practices do in a few years. Uh, we'll be doing it in one year. With that data, um, we will start gleaning insights um, and we'll be able to take the time to, to really educate our radiologists about how to properly consume AI. That means learn about where where the rad is missing things and and improve their quality but also learn about where ai is missing things i mean neither rad or ai is perfect the perfection if we're chasing that it's an impossibility and it's silly so so let's educate about both and then get the the rad to 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 be that expert in ai knowing where it works knowing where it doesn't and can consult for for when it's appropriate um, and know when maybe to listen to the AI more than ourselves and know when to listen to ourselves more than the AI because we have to figure out how does that work together. And that takes a little bit of time. So we'll continue to do that. I think we're, we're also going to um, work really closely and we've already been doing this in creating a business case for AI. Everyone asks who's gonna pay for it. It costs money to innovate and you can't just expect, although we're all altruistic, um, we can't expect that this is going to be sustainable if no one pays for it. We have to be realistic. CMS is not paying for it. Yes, we have NTAP programs and you know maybe, maybe we have the MCIT program coming down, but they're temporary. So we have to be creative and figure out how we're going to pay for it. And we've been starting that this year, looking at the, um, the ROI for the different clientele. What's the ROI for the hospital? What's the ROI for the RAD practice? What's the ROI for the payer? And the person that benefits, there should be, the most should be paying for some of that. And if we can prove that, then we can prove a business case and sustain it. Um, once we get that business case going, we can distribute it and roll it out across our radiologists who at that time will be perfectly ready for it because why? We've spent all this time educating them. Um, so, so that's a, a main part. And again, you know, millions, millions of exams, figuring out how to do this at scale, figuring out how to do uh, continuous validation, uh, you know, over time or a continuous process improvement in, in, at a scale that just no one's really thought about before. We're also going to be continuing to create products together. As we collaborate, let's uh, we're going to co-develop AI products that will be useful, hopefully across the market. Certainly, if if they're useful in in our practice, hopefully they're useful somewhere else. It's ten percent of the industry, and um, and the goal really is to how can we accelerate the adoption of artificial intelligence to start becoming standard of care because we know it has value and we have to push that and we've got to get our rads ready for that we've got to get our hospital clients ready for it so let's spend that time in the development and education absolutely i i, I wholeheartedly agree i think that the first of all on the roi side which i think is critical you know there is there are already you know studies and evidence showing that you know ai has done through implications but i think we're talking about a different scale, right? So, you know, can you do this in 500, you know, community hospitals? Can you show like how massive the ROI is that? And I think the ROI is especially massive in these environments, right? So um, that's definitely a big, big purpose of the partnership. Um, the other element which relates to our, our previous point about radiologists being the AI experts, um, a lot of the recent ADOC products are actually products for, you know, other service lines as well. So, you know, cardiovascular, neuroscience, um, based on deep radiology workflow integration and elevating the role of radiologists to trigger multidisciplinary workflows. Um, and together, I think the idea is how can we help health systems understand 
again, if you believe that care is going to be delivered differently, if you believe that radiology centralized a lot of that, then working together, we can develop a um, future where health systems understand how imaging AI impacts all service lines, right? Um, and maybe I'll paint kind of two, two pictures for the future, right? So there is one picture, which is like what's, what's happening today, right? You have all these different doctors running around and, you know, implementing like one use case, right? So you have like uh, whatever, uh, breast AI and or stroke AI or lung AI and like each one of them is separate workflow and, and you know, some of them coming from the service line. So like it's, it's becoming, you know, the radiologist kind of gets this as a byproduct and they, they start having like these five, you know, 10 widgets for each use case. And, and you know, this really scales and become very messy. Future number one, without a centralized thoughtful strategy approach, right? Future number two, you know, radiology taking an active role as you know, I mentioned and what we're gonna do in the partnership, we're presenting a unified consolidated picture with backend orchestration, unified consolidated workflow, spanning service lines. It's not just a radiology thing, it's a whole health system thing, but centralized within uh, a party that, that knows and understand data and workflow uh, deeply. Um, so that's kind of another, I would say, big, big goal for the partnership, keep me honest, you know. Yeah, no, I, I I think that's really true, and I'm glad you mentioned it because I didn't mention care coordination. I mean, it's a central component of what radiologists do. We're the physician's physician. We have to communicate and provide care across different service lines. And I would say that technology in the past has not helped us in doing that. It's actually in some ways harmed us. Now, it wasn't built that, it wasn't meant to do it. It's not like technology is a bad thing, but I will say that when I became a resident, the we, we got PACs that year. Um, and so what happened when I expected everyone to be coming down to my Starbucks in the morning and asking me what's going on, like zero zilch, no, people didn't come down anymore. They were all waiting, you know, the, relying on the RAD report. And suddenly this piece of paper became our form of communication. And what became the communication that we got from them instead of this robust information about the, the, the patient and their history, we got evaluate trauma or <laughs> abdominal pain or everything was always uh, suddenly the same. You didn't know if they had, oh, okay, yeah, they've got underlying metastatic breast cancer and they've, you know, had surgery five times. Um, so, so all of that data was missing, and, and it's unfortunate that technology did not bring us together. And now we're finally using technology, and I think ADOC has done this really well with their care coordination solutions, where you use technology to bring groups together. Um, I, I still think, I, I believe strongly in the, the physicians being at the center of care and, and radiology when it's a radiology specialty being at the center of that, but you don't want that to limit or bottleneck communication. You know, what have we done as solutions for, for, um, for integration in, in hospitals or locations where information is disparate? We've said, okay, you guys as humans, you integrate the information, you go to the EMR, you go to, you know, and gather it all together and figure it out and then provide the answer. Well, that's silly. Let's have technology help us integrate. So that's what these care coordination solutions are really doing. It's integrating the data and providing a common pathway for people to talk about it. And it's like a a um, technology advanced mechanism of the Starbucks that I talked about when I was a, I was a medical student. <laughs> and, and we're not gonna go backwards and force everyone to come to reading room. We need to use technology to, to do that and uh, bring us back to the future, right? <laughs> so for the, uh, the kind of workflows and uh, kind of tools that you've put together so far uh, collaboratively, what, what do those look like at the, the current state? So right now we've got the underlying infrastructure that has been built and we're gonna to continue to iterate and, and expand on that and send more studies to it. Like I said, we've got 15, over 15 million exams that are available, um, probably close to, close to 20 by the end of the year. And, um, and people will be able to see that at, at RSNA. So uh, RSNA is an exciting time. Hopefully a lot of people are still going to be able to go. Um, I'll be there personally a lot. I know a lot you're going to be there, but we will have a, a showcase where you can see the AI um, ADOC products in action. They are running through our infrastructure. You don't 
see infrastructure, it's in the background. Um, but that infrastructure is what is enabling it to do all these super cool things um, in terms of connectivity and data movement that are that are really hard problems in radiology. Now, you won't see that and you won't see it means it's a good thing, means it's working well. And, and what you will be able to showcase, which is wonderful, is um, ADOC's algorithms. And so come by one of the booths and, and check it out. What I think we want from AI is to be like workflow to be very seamless, very slick. Right, uh, and I think kind of it's high time that we have, I guess, Tesla-grade products. I know RP is working and creating these really advanced workflows. So uh, what we'll show in our SNA, I think, is a really slick experience. That um, I think the the main thing we'll focus on is expecting user behavior. So trying to foresee what the user, what AI results that a user would need, and and put it in front of them at the right time. And I think that's that's one of the biggest elements for work, AI workflows, um, you have to understand what information is relevant, not just bombard with every AI alert, like, and then how do you do that in a meaningful way? And RP has been uh, an amazing partner to developing kind of these kinds of workflows. Yes, this is why you need good partners, right? So when we work with a lot in ADOC, we iterate on stuff. We're like, I think it should be this way and let's try that and keep going until we get to the solution that is really well accepted. And then when when something new changes, like a huge amount of new volume comes in or, or new data comes in, we get to work together and iterate and continue to improve. It's like, I feel like it's like my Tesla. Uh, you know, usually a car, over time it gets worse but one day I get a software upgrade and I'm like, wow, how's my car better today than it was yesterday? It's kind of like that, that, that that's what our partnership is like. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, so at RSNA, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing it there and seeing both of you there too. Um, but at, at RSNA, there's going to be all types of people. And some of them are going to be, you know, just as passionate about AI and just as sure that they want to be in the driver's seat. And there's, there's going to be a chunk of folks who maybe isn't so sure that it's car or that that they that that car serves them. Um, and everybody's gonna figure out how this is gonna work in the long run. And what I'm curious is kind of what it's gonna take um, for AI to be embraced at scale and adopted at scale, given kind of where we are right now. AI is pretty immature still, not not the capabilities that are out there. The, the capabilities, like with the ones we're using for MADOC are, are very mature and, and work really well uh, across our very varied uh, organization and varied data. But but if you look at the industry overall, we're still pretty early on. I, I like using the Gardner hype cycle. And, and if you look at that, even for, for 2021, we're still kind of, we're over the hype curve, thank goodness, um, where we're expecting too much and saying it's gonna replace radiologists. And the more educated we get which over time, it, it, we're realizing that that's not the case and that's not what we should be striving for. But we're still fairly early on in the maturity. So to me, what do you do in this time? educate yourselves about how AI works. I mean, I didn't start out being an AI expert. I learned it. It's all learnable. You don't need to learn the very specifics of each algorithm and, and how the math is doing its computational effort. What we need are people that understand where AI is appropriate, where it's functioning well, um, what are the great use cases for it, being a translator between the clinicians and the data scientists and, and explaining that to other people who haven't been exposed to it before. Get involved in social media, uh, follow Jake, uh, you know, in the imaging wire and, and make sure that you're learning about these things because it is essential. The more you learn about it, I'll let you make your own decision. I mean, I came to my decision about as I learned about AI and how useful I think it is. I'm not afraid of it anymore. I mean, at the beginning, I questioned it a lot. I wanted to make sure I thought about it. But through education, I now have data to direct my thoughts about it. So, so education is number one. Number two, if you are a, a healthcare organization or a radiology practice, I suggest either uh, learning a little bit about the infrastructure that you need in order to deploy it appropriately. ADOC has some, some great information about that. We have great information, but there's information everywhere. Uh, take time to invest in it because it's not as, um, when you're doing it at scale, it, it, it requires a little bit of forethought. And if you plan that now, when it is time and, and you know when you are ready to go live, you're gonna be, you're gonna be able to turn on that switch. And maybe I'll add from my perspective, um, 
I think AI is coming um, faster than I know we anticipated. So our growth rate, I think, is so our growth rate is comparable, you know, to all the fast growing, you know, SaaS enterprise businesses in other worlds. And I think it's a first in healthcare, right? Healthcare traditionally has been a very slow adopting space, right? It would take years upon years upon years. We're, you know, we're talking, especially with RP, you know, 10% of the market adoption, we're talking about, you know, dozens of percentage of the market already adopting. AI has been commercial for what, two and a half years, maybe hmm. three, like if you're stretching it. Um, I don't think healthcare is realizing how fast is this, uh, how fast is this moving. So I'm, I'm only saying that because, uh, you know, uh, decisions take a lifetime. Let's say you want to, you know, build an AI uh, project team and kind of start evaluating and doing all of that. Uh, I, I, I forecast, I would say, like, I don't have a crystal ball, but I forecast that probably two Mac three years from now, majority of the market will have AI already, right? We're not we're not that far away, right? So um, it's it's coming, it's coming soon. It's not a ten year thing. It's not even a five year thing. It's it's a two year thing max. Um, and then the question is, how do you prepare for it, and how do you understand where you want it the most, what problems you prioritize? So I definitely agree with Nina. The the so. You don't need necessarily need to adopt AI right away, but you probably want to educate yourself um, and start building the infrastructure because it's coming uh, and potentially sooner than expected. And I hope that we're helping with that. I mean, that that's part of our goal is I, I care really strongly about radiology as a specialty. It's why I joined radiology partners in the beginning. It was 2012 when I was talking to them and it was very negative time in radiology. I wouldn't have told my kids to actually go into it. And that's very depressing to me. I think we need to come together and make our specialty something that is not only as uh, capable as it is now, but as capable as it can be, which is so such so central within healthcare and so personal to patients. Our mission is very great. And um, and I, I'm hoping, you know, what we're doing so far in our partnership is is preparing all of us for that journey and sharing our expertise in a way that you don't have to start from the beginning. You know, you can start from some of the lessons that we've learned and we're happy to share because we're, we're not doing this to be selfish. We're doing this because it's important for for healthcare overall. I completely agree. And I and I thank you both for for coming and, and joining the show today. And like you said, Nina, it's. You know, it's about education and um, kind of whether you're a part of the group who fully understands the, the growth and the future of AI or the folks who are kind of trying to figure it out, you owe it to yourself to, to learn about that and to explore it. And um, it's, it's stuff like this that helps everybody to kind of try to figure out their own path uh, within AI. Uh, what I would say to the folks who are watching this right now is a really good starting point if you're heading to RSNA is to swing by uh, the RP and the ADOC booth and check out the, uh, the demonstrations and, and see what this looks like live. Um, Cause really for, for most of you who aren't gonna be AI developers, that's the most important part of it is the, the experience. Um, and, uh, and continue to, to learn and, and thank you a lot. And thank you, Nina, for, for joining us and, and doing that educating and then also doing all that work to, to bring AI to scale in, in the real world. Thanks, thank you, Jay. Jay. Thanks for having us. All right. Everybody have a wonderful uh, day and take care until next time.